as we are moving forward with the DRBFM process, now we already created our change list, we already created the change matrix, and we're ready to build up our design review members list. So this list, you will keep coming back to it again and again. You may reach the last step in your DRBFM process, but you will keep coming back to this list. Why? This list is basically having the participants or the design review experts that will be uh, reviewing the DRBFM sheets with you and trying to identify and confirm the potential concerns and the no concerns. So you come here, you will add your participants and those participants should be firstly design review members from the depart department itself. So if you're in design department, then you have a design review participant from the design department and you will have design review participants from the other systems around your products. Like if you have, uh, if you're designing a radio for a vehicle, then this radio is interacting with the vehicle electricity system and uh, this radio is interacting with the speaker system as well. So you want to invite the related people uh, with those neighboring systems to be able to tell their inputs. Like you would say, does this radio uh, impedance affect your speakers? Can your speakers ha handle this kind of uh, sound quality? I'm just saying an example here, you know? So you invite all the related members. Firstly, the members of the product design itself, like whoever is designing that product or that specific part will be called and as you're moving forward in your review maybe you will be inviting different participants so for now you finished your change matrix in its initial form not a final form now you want to start to put in names so you put the names for the engineers and experts from your own department so you put the company name and you put the participant name and the title and you start to put dates like your review dates will be here so let's say in august um in in august 5 2019 we're now 2020 but i'm saying as example you are going to have a meeting and after two weeks you're going to have another design review meeting after five days from that day you're having another meeting and so on so you keep doing the meetings and as you're moving forward this is why i said you will keep coming back to this list because you want to come back and say oh did i invite the right people for uh, this exact meeting or no and you will go next did I invite who attended who's not so you want you want to know you want to keep that in a safe place to be able to tell who reviewed and who's not so in the future when a certain problem happened or if you missed a certain uh, detail about your product that didn't get captured in the RBFM then you know um, why that happened in terms of design review meetings then you invite people from functions, invite people from uh, outer areas. Sometimes you need to invite a supplier. If Let's say if your vehicle radio is being supplied by somebody else, then for sure you want to bring that supplier and in specific the design team and the engineering team from that supplier to be on those meetings to be able to give their inputs if they say, if they confirm with you that this is a concern or not. That's why you kind of proof your change list as you're moving forward before you have it in a final form you are proofing your inputs and making sure is that something everybody is agreeing on in a positive way or no and of course you need to include responsible experts and related design engineering departments testing departments material engineering as i said this list could be changing depending on the application that you are using it for Anybody who's related in any way to your design or to the part that you're creating the RBFM for, then he need to be there so that you can have input from as much people and from as much experts as possible. Try to avoid assumption in those design reviews. There is no assumptions. You already made your assumptions through your sheet and you already landed to your change list. Now there is no assumptions. You need to hear the solid words out of the experts. If they think that interaction between function and change point is a valid concern or no. 
if yes why if no why and uh, you need to have as well your references anything you have from those experts as a reference or as an evidence then you, you need to have it in a reference form uh, for future reference as well then before the design review start there's a certain steps that you can follow to prepare for that meeting so firstly of course we said that many times you visualize the potential concerns identified by the change matrix again any concern that you identified as a potential or a, a confirmed concern you need to have it clearly called out and you need to be able to tell the story why do you think that's a potential or a confirmed a confirmed concern then you create an A rank list and the five whys, which is a root cause analysis that we will learn about as moving forward for each concern. So each concern you need to have the A rank and the five whys or the root cause analysis for that specific concern. And eventually you discuss with the design review experts the possible ways uh, that the problem can be solved or avoided. So in short, three steps. Firstly, you do problem visualization. You clarify the changes. Then you do problem finding and you discover all the potential issues. And eventually you do the problem solving. So after taking the design review input from all the experts, then that's where you do the systematic elimination of the issue that you suspected. A rank worksheet, how does it look like? So firstly, you list the change point that you identify as a concern, then the requirement or a function for that part or a change point. Then what is your concern? What is the failure mode? Like you can say, uh, the welding is being separated on high temperatures. That's the failure mode. So there's a separation of the welding at high temperatures, or there is a crack at impact of a certain force then that's a failure mode how does the failure happen or how do you think the failure would happen in the future and then you want to say when and how the concern appear at a certain temperature at a certain force at a certain speed at a certain volume certain pressure any physical property that make the concern appear and how does it appear a little crack can start uh, to show up or there's a change in color change in taste if it's a food and so on you know like unlimited choices here so you want to do your best practices to to put the best when and how for the concern then how does it affect the customer does it affect yes or no if yes how no why it doesn't affect the customer then the design actions taken to avoid the concern what did you do so far to avoid this concern and what is left to be done to do this concern, which can be as well listed as recommended actions. So either recommended actions from your side, what do you think should be done? And eventually the solid word will be from the expert. What are the recommended actions need to be taken to avoid this A rank problem, which is a confirmed high level uh, problem. And so on, you keep going with all the change points in your change matrix should be captured here um, in writing with the reference to the numbers and call outs that you already did in your visualization part in the first of the process of the RBFM.